Um, today, we are looking at, at how to, um, hold a second, I'm going to post some a link into the chat. Um, we're going to be taking a look at drawing seabirds. Here comes your link. <clears throat> and what that link is, is a bunch of paper models. And I put something on Facebook and just recently added it into the, um, the, the, I recently added it into the event description. But um, there are paper models that go along with this workshop. And if you don't have those right now, don't worry about it. But what I want to encourage you to do is to print those out and play with them. If you already have them prepared, then these will help you. Um, we have albatross. We have gulls. And we also have magnificent frigate birds. And we're going to be um, using these to help us think about how to uh, how to foreshorten our, our our drawings of of birds in flight. So actually, if you don't have these yet, it might be a little bit too late to kind of do the whole kind of craft cutout project. You can paint them too because this guy gets red. Um, and uh, but if you uh, but I do recommend that you get those after the workshop. If you um, do already have these, I think you're gonna find that they're actually helpful to hold in your hands, right? So um, these are going to, they're not just fun. Oh, and also my, my um, Amelia, when I was working on these last night, she came up and she was really having fun whooshing them and she's going whoosh, whoosh. And so she said, you should do that in your class. And so she wrote me a note that here it is, it says, note to self, whoosh him. So I just have to take a moment. This is for you, Amelia. All right, there we go, whoosh. Um, so those will be of, 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 of help to us. Now, if you have studied bird wings before and have been drawn a lot of songbirds, you start drawing wings on these sorts of characters and it gets confusing. It gets confusing. Like there's there's something else going on here, and it's different than you see with our little passerine birds, all the little sparrows and warblers and things that we're so used to drawing. Our bluebirds and our California scrub jays. These critters, I've got a different thing going on in their wing, and so what I wanted to do is to um, explore that. Whoosh. Um, and. So I am going to um, I'm going to share my screen. On one side, you'll be able to see slides and play slideshow and window. And on the other side, you're going to see my um, sketching tablet. And so I'll be making some drawings. Uh oh, sketching tablet is blank. Um, select camera. All right, I'm going to try to unplug and plug back in. Aha. That rebooted it. Um, and let me see, now I need to find Zoom again and I'm gonna transfer over to share my desktop. And so here we go. Um, so 
Um, all of the images that you're going to be seeing of birds, they all come from our favorite birdpixel.com. Thank you so much, Vivek Kenzodi, for letting us use these for all of these workshops and learning how to draw birds. Really recommend people check out that site. Um, let's take a look at this. This is the blue-footed booby. And it's seen a fish down below it and zoom down into the water and it's gonna go get itself a treat. Now, what is different about this wing shape than what we're used to seeing? So if you have been drawing a lot of birds, you'll notice that there's something really strange going on in this wing shape. Specifically, um, so no normally when we talk about you know, bird wings, here's, here's what we see. Um, we see that there is, you know, here's, here's, here's the body of my bird. And we talk about how there are these two major sections. Oops, we're off the screen. There we go. So here's my little bird's head and here's the bird. But the, so here, the, we'll start off with the drawing of the hawk. Here's the red tail hawk, all right? So here's a little red tail hawk and it's got a big tail sticking out. Right, so my little hawk, uh, it has its wing sticking out here, and we usually think about the wing in two parts, the primary feathers and the secondary feathers. And um, underneath here, there's a shoulder, there's an elbow, there's a wrist, and a little hand. All the primary feathers are attaching to the hand. All the secondary feathers are attaching to the forearm like that. And that makes up our bird wing. And so we get this really sort of simple two-part bird wing. But notice there is this other bone here. Here it is our humerus, right? Um, so our upper arm bone, and then you get to the, the forearm bones, the radius and the ulna. So in that little space there, there is just another you know, little kind of dip in there. But that's that's how you kind of go about, you know, if you're if you're drawing a, a, a sparrow, a warbler, a red-tailed fox. You're going to be seeing this basic setup on all those birds. Now we look back at that booby over there. There's, there's this third section in the wing. So check out the photograph. These are the primary feathers. These are the secondary feathers. What on earth is this business? What's going on here? Huh? All right. So there is this three part wing three sections in this wing. What's going on here is that in long-winged seabirds, here's what we have going on. If here's your, your seabird body, short little tail, they have, these, these wing bones are gonna be really, really long. And they're going to have a long forearm to an elbow. Then there is, I mean, so sort of upper arm to the elbow, then the forearm really long, and then a long hand coming out here. And so attached to the hand, there is a triangle of primary feathers. And they all fan out like that. Attached to the forearm here are our, so that's the primary feathers, are our secondary feathers, and they come down straight, and then they start to tilt a little bit, and they come out like that. And then attached in here on the humerus in here, we have humeral feathers. We have this section, this new part, humor, big letter H here, primary, secondaries. And then these are our humoral feathers. Oh my goodness, we have humoral feathers. So if you're gonna have a really crazy long, narrow wing um, and you wanna take advantage of, of, of what can come down here off your upper arm, you gotta get yourself some humoral feathers. And that's what we've done here. So as we're looking at 
this diving bird. What you're seeing is, let's just uh, kind of go out, look at the negative shape in front of the wing. This block here is your humeral pillars. You then have curving in here. Uh, it's actually, let's put in the, the uh, let's put in the primary feathers first. Primary feather is going to be a triangle out here. And then the, the secondary feathers are going to curve in here. So we've got this extra thing. There's also this rather interesting little step. If you look along the front edge here, it's not a totally straight line. Um, here it's like mostly straight. Yeah, it's pretty straight, okay? But here you can actually see that there's a little inflection point right here. That's where the end of the wrist is. So there's actually bones that will, are coming out here like this. Oh, I didn't want you yet, but hey, since you're here. Um, we're seeing that same thing here. Here's that little inflection point. So it's shoulder, elbow is here, wrist is here, hand bones go to here, and then the, 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 these feathers come down from that. Sometimes this hand out to primaries is a straight line. Sometimes you're going to see an angle in that front part. So <clears throat> let's draw this by, um, so if my, my, my bird is, 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 is coming down, I want to, to, to look at the negative shape. Oh, Jack, could you uh, slide your page? Ah, thank you. Thank you so much. So here's my bird zooping down. And actually, um, and it, I'm going to look at this negative shape here. So it comes in, it comes up, it comes back and back. So a good way of sort of starting this is to draw this negative shape, draw the air up here by the cheeks. And then you're going to get your blocks of uh, so these these three sections um, can be held. This is actually kind of this is also kind of cool here on the underside of the humeral feathers. Humeral feathers sticking down here. You also see these this this cool triangle of axillary armpit feathers. Um, and uh, so uh, there's kind of that a neat little white triangle in this uh, boobies pits. <clears throat> Just so weird to see humeral feathers, right? I'm not used to that. But you look at these shapes out here and they're really best understood in doom, 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 three seconds, it's three sections. Sometimes if, when the wing is straighter, the humerals and the secondaries will kind of line up and they'll sort of feel much more like one unit. But if in the back of your head, those are, 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 are there. So from this little slide, just make a couple, a few little um, quick thumbnails of, um, of, of those, those birds in flight. Ignore that. Wait, come back.
it's kind of a neat little step on the back side. Sometimes where the, you see the secondaries come in, there's a little step down to the humerals, not quite at the same level. These uh, boobies do this really cool, uh, when, they, when they're going after food, they, they start with their wings out and then they spot food down below them and they dive. And they'll often do these sort of synchronized dives where a bunch of boobies in the air will all go And as they get closer to the water, they tuck their wings into this L position. And right before they hit, they extend the wings all the way out behind them so that they don't break their wings um, entering the water. So they enter just like an arrow. So, but there's this really kind of cool, um, this sort of flying T position. Let's just sketch that because it is just so crazy cool booby, right? It doesn't look like we're drawing, it looks like you're drawing some sort of advanced fighter aircraft. And here are the, uh, the, the, the primary feathers are sticking out as, as, as points. The secondaries are folding up over the humerals. Humerals tucking underneath those. Just, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like a so the bird that we're used to seeing. Oh, that's so neat. So that's so the first thing we're, we're thinking about with seabirds is these sort of crazy three sections of the wing. But don't worry, it's going to get easier because we're going to start with a bird that does a little bit less crazy dynamic stuff with its wings. If you have your bird models at this point. Getting out your albatross is going to be a really good idea. Your albatross has ridiculously long um, wings. And I don't know, maybe there's, there's 23. I forget how many uh, secondary feathers, but lots and lots of secondary feathers and a little block of humerals. So on the underside of this, this area that's a little bit gray next to the body here, those are my humerals. Well, actually, I can put it down here on the big screen, All right? So there's my humerals uh, coming in this section here. So these would be secondaries. And what I, I'm, I'm going to do is um, I'm going to initially kind of get it just so there's a little bit of an arch, a little bit of a bow in the wings. This is kind of cool. You can see this kind of coming up to a point here. That is its elbow. That is so shoulder, elbow, and then wrist is out here. So this bump out here, this is where its wrist is. So shoulder, elbow, wrist out there. So those elbows are slightly, slightly up. And what I'm going to do is I am going to hold this. And this is, if you have your own, it's really fun to, 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 to do this. Um, and notice, uh, actually, I'm going to tilt this. Notice this way here that the way I've got this uh, on, on the on the camera here go up even more. Right. This swing you're seeing it long. This one you see short. If I turn it this way, they both wings seem the same length. If I turn it this way. moment. I need to adjust my little gizmo here. Um, 
Um, see if I can get this bird the same orientation as we have there. Um, here. Bottom main up. Trying to do. Yes, there we go. If now I've got it in the same pose. Now take a look at my bird, just like the one in the photograph. My top wing is short, my bottom wing is long. The reason for this is that these wings are bowed. These wings aren't flat in this case. Because one is, um, because that uh, top one is pointing towards you more, you see it in a foreshortened position. Um, so there's a, and also notice both in the photograph and on the object uh, on my table here, that the, you see the one, the top wing, the shorter one, looks like it has got much stronger angles in it. Because it is foreshortened, the um, angles are much more apparent on that foreshortened wing. One last thing to notice is that the bird's head is in profile. You're seeing the bird at an angle underneath the body, but the head is in, is in profile. As these birds fly around, as the body turns and banks, they, don't, they keep their head more oriented towards the ground. So um, if they're, they're, their body can actually be, be turning around, but their head will be keeping level and tracking um, either the fish that it's looking at. The peregrine falcons will do the same thing. As they're, as they're sort of moving around, you'll see that the, the head of almost like it has a gyroscope attached into it. It will stay, um, it will stay uh, more level with the ground. So sometimes the bird is doing an extreme banking position and the head will still be um, uh, up, uh, uh, pointing uh, with the top of its head pointing towards the sky, the bottom of its head pointing for down, even though the body's at a big angle. So what I'm going to do with, with this is I'm going to, a, a good sort of way of sort of starting a, a, a drawing of a bird in flight is, on. Hi Jack, we have a question. Yes. That cool gizmo that that's using um, that you're using to hold up the bird. What's it called? I don't know the name of this gizmo. This um, was on my dad's fly tying uh, part of my dad's fly tying toolkit, and he gave it to me. Um, it uh, so it's, there's there's also a, a magnifier lens that you can uh, attach onto it. Uh, it's got two little hands. Um, I don't know the name of that cool gizmo, but I agree. It's, it's fun. Um, but let's 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 do this for for this bird. So first, I'm going to just draw lightly. Um, my body angle is kind of like this. My my wings are coming more straight across it, like that. Um, and so I'm just looking at body angle, wing angle. Um, I'm going to make my body a little bit thicker. With more out on the, 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 the back side than in the front. And I'm just going to also get my wings roughly the right length. So at the start, I want one wing that's really long. And I'm going to get my other wing here that is really, that is shorter. And, 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 and now I'm going to look at the proportions of these. 
um, where the primaries are, where the secondaries are. The primaries on, let's, on this, let's take a look at this front wing. There's an angle that comes in, an angle that comes up out to a point, and then there's a little triangle on top, a little triangle. There, that's my primaries. There's a curve that comes in back here, and then another change in angle. That is where the humerals are. On the other side, I don't want myself to get confused and make things the same size. The proportions are going to be totally, totally, totally different. Okay. There is a wide section of humerals. Uh, we're going out to sort of far out to the point we're going to go flat and then out to a point here. I've got my curve of my secondaries out to there. So the, the wing is a really different, I have to look for those, 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 those angles and really different shape. We also had somebody put into the chat um, a link to, to something similar to what to, to the gizmo that you have. And um, it's called a, a helping hands magnifier. Oh, I like that. That's a that's a, an apt description of it. So once I've got this birdie basically blocked in, I can then would be able to come over it with a pen and start to draw kind of the, the lines that are more the, the official shape of the bird, or I could also use a pencil. I'm going to make this a nice hard line. I'm going to have this line up here be a little bit softer because it's all white. Oh, Jack, I'm sorry to interrupt you again. Um, we've got some requests. Um, could you possibly move the helping hands just a little bit so we could see the drawing better? Sure. Ah, thank you. Now, if the bird goes in a different position, I'm going to see these wings in a different position. Um, here, it's still an albatross with crazy long wings, but the this bird has its wings a little bit more flat. We're looking at the back. And because it's a little bit more flat, um, because it's a little bit more flat, then um, I'm seeing a similar shape and size on the top and the bottom. You're getting this side much more exaggerated because you're close to the lens, right? Um, because we're, we're close to where that, that, that lens is. But actually, let me, yeah. Um, but, but notice this one, because it's holding the wings basically flatter, that this top wing and this bottom wing, we're seeing them roughly the same size. So when it's flat, you're going to get same sizes. When it's if this one were tilted down, it would be shorter. If it were tilted up, it would be longer. So here you've got another one, and we're seeing it. Um, it's holding its wings fairly flat. Notice that you're looking at very much sort of a back angle of the bird and a side view of the head. All right. Um, so let's just sketch that out really quickly. Um, and we're going to just do a, a bunch of kind of quick sketches of these. So I'm going to say you're roughly flying in this direction, and you've got your wings coming across here. Um, give your body a little bit of, of, of thickness. Okay. 
and primaries, you've got a bump of the secondaries, and then it's going to taper in with the humerals. I have a bump of the secondaries, and then a taper in of the humerals. Um, on this, to give this little bird a little bit more, more structure, um, I'm going to make it clear that this line here this wing is going to attach up on the side of the body. So I'm putting the side of the body down below where that wing comes in. And that, that helps this one be the one that is closer to. Let's take a look at another one. Right. Start with what is the angle of those wings? What is the angle of the body? Note that they are not making, they're not at perfect right angles to each other. You're looking straight under, uh, if you're looking um, straight at a bird, uh, or top or the bottom, these will make a nice right angle. But all the bird has to do is start flying at kind of a cantilopus angle. Now my body direction is this way, and my wings are coming across it. I'm no longer seeing this at, at a right angle. So um, I'm starting with that, that cross. I'm going to give my bird a little bit of thickness, and it's going to look down this direction. I'm coming off on a long wing, long primaries. That back one, it's going to be a little bit shorter. That little thing sticking out the back or its feet, the feet are dangling back there. Now, things are starting to get a little bit more interesting because what this bird is doing, and we're gonna be seeing a lot of birds doing this, is they will hold their elbow up. So if you look at the bird from the front, you're gonna be seeing the bird is here. It's gonna be holding its elbow up, its forearm down, and then the hand either out like this or the hand can be pointing down like this. So you might get up and pull things down, or you might get arch to a flat plane out. Oops, the opposite screen. So we might get this arch with the elbow, that's the elbow, the wrist, high. So if you have one of these models, you can put a slight little bend in the wing, and then at the wrist, Flatten that out again. So I'm going to put a little bit of bend in here. Now, when I um, so we're at a, at a slight angle like this, you can get. There, there's some interesting, interesting things that are going on with this. So notice that um, 
on our photograph here, this part here that's coming up towards me, this is this distance from here to here is a little bit shorter from than from here to here. You see that? This distance um, from here to here is a little bit shorter than from here to here. Let me make a diagram of this because this is this is kind of weird. Um, my bird's body, I'm gonna just put a little oval in here, give it a little head just to, just to make it feel a little bit more love. But my wing's gonna be coming out, attaching in here. My wing is gonna attach here. The wing on the other side is gonna be attaching out in and imagine there's a little box here on the back of this bird where my wings are attaching. And this part here is, I'm seeing this as short. And I'm seeing this one here as longer. This line longer. So I'm seeing that this part the humeral zone on this bird is sticking up like this. The humeral zone on the one that is coming towards me is foreshortened. And what about the secondary zone? The secondary zone, so these are the secondaries here. Notice that this seems big. And this seems small. That's not just because it's um, this one's further away from you. It's that this one is turned down towards you, and this one is turned away from you. So the angle of it makes it appear to have a different, um, a, a, a different length. So I'm going to from here. I'm coming down with a large platform. And over here, I have a small one. So the proportions of this and this were different, and the proportions of this and this were different. Now what's happening with the primary feathers, then the primary feathers are out attached to that and a little fan uh, over here that are coming out uh, towards me. That one's pointing towards me a little bit more away from me. This one is pointing a little bit more towards me and that's making it bigger. So on my buddy here, um, if I I'm going to just draw a line in here and a line in here. Notice that this looks small, this looks big, when really they're the same size. This looks small in here, and this looks bigger. That's one reason why making the little paper model and being able to hold it in your hand and kind of go like, oh, I see what's going on. That part of the wing, that humeral part, is turned up towards me, and I'm seeing it big, and the secondary part is turned away from me. Oh, what about over here? Same, it's the reverse. Oh, that's interesting. So that's why I love these paper models. Um, drawing from photographs is great. Um, combine that with drawing from a paper model, and you're going to be able to understand these sort of weird wing geometries much better. Let's take a look at that back wing. Really pay attention to the weird things that that back wing does. 
So what's going on? So my humerals are up. So I'm seeing my humeral section, all of those. The secondary section is starting to turn down away from me on that back wing and blocking most of the primaries that are essentially kind of edge on. So can I do that with my model here? Yes. There it is. We're seeing a lot of that humeral section, not a lot of the secondary section. And there's just a little bit of that um, primary sticking out on the, 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 the back. So, you know, there I've got a little head. And what is my wing doing? It is coming up and then over a little bit. And then I'm seeing this little tiny flick out here. That's my primaries. Isn't it weird to draw primaries like that? But notice that's what we're seeing. There's this little tiny flick of like, ah, the primaries over here, right? And what our brain wants us to do is to do this. But no, it's foreshortened. It's foreshortened. Oh, so. Um, drawing these seabirds, when you there's there's such fun foreshortening things that happen with these wings that you know it can cause lots of cool counterintuitive effects. Here, this little albatross, it looks like it's got a short wing. Why is that? That's because the wing is foreshortened towards you. Right. If the wing were all the way up, you go, wow, you've got a ridiculously long wing. But when it's foreshortened, you're going to see it as something that looks like a shorter wing. Get used to asymmetrical wings. So we're gonna have big wing. Oh, we already saw this picture, all right? So big wing on one side, small on the other. Note again, that the wing that is more foreshortened, the angles, it gets more kinky. It's got more little kinks and turns in it. Let's sketch this one. Let's sketch this one, right? Um, so I've got my body here and I've got my wings coming across here. Okay, my body is gonna be got a head in there with a little beaky thing sticking down. Um, I'm going to come up. Think of this wing as three parts. One, two, and make those primaries just a small little bump on top. On the far side of the bird, you get to draw a lot of wings. That's so gonna roughly come down like this. So I'm coming down to my elbow. I'm coming up to my wrist. Little humeral step in there. There's that primaries with that cool extra angle where the wrist primary break it. So that we're now getting used to seeing that little thing, not as a straight line, but as having a bend in it. Ooh. Look at that. Wow, it doesn't look sharp on the tip of the wings of the shear water. And somebody drew that wrong. I, I, I first um, was, I, I was looking through, actually, I think it was in this book. Hold on, I'm walking across the room, pulling a book off my shelf. Um, I think it was in Birds of Europe, um, where I, I, I saw these kind of weird angles 
in a but yeah look at this look at this I, I remember looking at this, this at some point like what are you doing what's going on with that like why is this person drawing this wing that way and then I realized oh it's because it looks that way right they do this right and but in order to kind of get that I need to kind of break it apart in my head look at this over here right foreshortened wing non foreshortened wing lots of kinky angles smoother right so these same things show up all sorts of, of, of fun places um so this is uh let me see are there turns they also did where are my turns oh you guys go oh there's some turns um yeah the turns they i was looking at the wings of how they were drawing these turns and look at this guy look at this what up with that oh how could that form yeah fortunately we have a little gall, right? We can, I can take my gall and turn it around and I turn it forward away from me and slow that up. So the uh, it's it's fun to try to figure out what are the angles that you're looking at when you are seeing all of these neat these neat shapes. Um, so have you been sketching that shear water? I hope so. The way Bonto is, all right. So here's the, the back of that bird. And we've got angle, what a neat negative shape. And then it's gonna come up flat and then back. Oh goodness. And then we, we're gonna have a big bump out and then a little bit more sort of a subtle bump in there for our, uh, where the humerals are. And on the far side wing, I'm gonna run out of paper. Those fun kinks and turns in that top wing. And so it just it makes such a difference to have yourself a little paper mop. Oh, let's get this 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 bird is this this frigate bird is so cool. Because what they're gonna be doing is the frigate birds are gonna be holding their angles at more of a kinky, their wings at more of a kinky angle. They regularly, the, 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 the uh, blah, 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 uh, albatross like to have them out nice and straight. The frigate birds, when they are going up soaring, they hold their wings straighter. But then when they're kind of going around and being active, they've got this really strong bends in the wing. And so, um, so that's why we've got a, another version of the, the paper models that's just for the frigate bird. And so when we're, we're looking at these, we want to, when we're sketching them, um, if I'm, I'm here, and so at, at, at first, I'm just gonna kind of dynamically say, like, you've got a wing that's coming up here like that. You've got a wing that is coming out 
our, 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 our field. Okay. Um, and then you, I'm going to start to, to, to put in my negative shapes. If you are out and you're looking at these things uh, zipping around, sometimes you're like an initial sketch might be something that just looks like this. Right? And see what I'm doing? I'm kind of, oops, <laughs> like that. But I'm, I'm just sort of saying that, oh, I've got, you know, these, these, these are sort of my, my leading wing angles. These are the sort of the axis of the body. And then I can build that over. So my, there's going to be a more broad based humeral zone. There's going to be an, an arc of my secondaries. And then there's a triangle of my uh, of my primary set. Here on the far side of the bird, I can't really see the humerus. But isn't it interesting that we kind of go from narrow to wide? Narrow. Um, if you are on a boat cruising around where um, frigate birds like to hang out, they like to follow your boat. <laughs> and so they will, um, they will be. Uh, just holding poses like this, um, following your boat around. They'll be sort of keeping a, a, a regular distance. And so maybe 10 meters away, um, the frigate bird will be just sitting there following your boat. Let's shoulder, elbow, whoops, come back. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. Oh, that's so cool. Um, Notice this part of the wing here. This is strange, isn't it? That's my, what's going on here? Would you allow yourself to draw a wing with secondary feathers like that and primary feathers like that? Wow. I mean, that is, that's, that's going to take some, believing the bird, believing the, the, the patterns and the, the foreshortening that you have. If I take my model here, I can turn it so that, let's get this wing coming down. There we go. So I've got my big secondary section here. And up here in the primaries, I'm just looking at that as edge on. I'm seeing a little small part of the top surface of the wing. And then this big triangle of uh, this big triangle. Um, flopping out on the other side. So this point right here, that is the point of the wrist. So notice how much material there is between the point of the wrist and the tip there. But when I'm holding it at this angle, wouldn't you want to draw, you, you would want to draw that far wing like this. All right, here it is. Uh, and up to a point, um, your, your brain is saying, just ignore what you actually are seeing. Right? And instead, if this is primaries, draw that as long primaries. Oops, I'm totally off my screen. So your brain is going to want to try to make you make this part as long as you know that it really is. Look at that foreshortening away from me. Oh, that's why these little paper models, they're so much fun because you can see 
this weird shape, this weird kind of counterintuitive shape. And then you can say, what's, what's causing that? Why is it doing that? So again, I've got from the front view, a little bit of an arch and then uh, This is the view off the back of your boat. They'll just be cruising around hovering in here. Here you see what joint is this? What joint is this? When you look at pictures like this, actually thinking anatomically what's going on there, we're up to our elbow here. So that's humerals that are back in here, wrist in here, and then primaries in there. So albatross can also do this. Um, so here is an albatross. You've got that bow in the wings. You see it coming up and then down, up and then down, up and then down. So it's holding its elbow up, its wrist down. And then the hand is out flat from that. So if I were to give my albatross friend some action like that. That's what I'm seeing there. And you couple that with um, you know, turning the bird around and you can get some really surprising things. Look at that, what's the point of the bird in the same direction? But look at that far wing. Look at that far wing. You just got that arch coming over to it. And then this one is going to turn this one down a little bit here. And actually, I'm going to turn this wing tip up a little bit to make that shorter. And you can, you can figure out what's going on with the geometry of these poses. So it's this ridiculously long winged bird. And, uh, and on the wing that is on the side that is close to me, I am just seeing Let's see. See that. My goodness. And on the side that is, is, is coming out towards me, it's going to be a much bigger one. These are such fun foreshortening puzzles. Look at that. All right, yeah, everybody, let's, let's I, we're just about out of time here, but this is just, I mean, it's such interesting angles. Let's, 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 let's sketch this one in. Let's, let's do that one together. So on the piece of paper.
drawing from models and drawing from photographs before you get out in the field and have these things swooping around you is a great idea. I'm not a particularly large head. It's going to fly off in just a moment. But again, all these pictures come from birdpixel.com. And it's a, you just do a search in there for albatross, booby, uh, frigate bird, and all these images come up. Final one, let's again notice, observe on the close wing, the humerals, the secondaries, and the primaries. Observe those on the far wing. Look at how small those primaries are. Notice how pronounced the angles are on the far wing. Notice how much subtler they are on the wing that is coming towards you. This scribbly drawing here has been blocked in major forms. And then I can look up. Albatross head on its own gyroscope, staying level with the horizon as the body banks and turns that head, just staying level. Horizon.
So what I want to encourage you to do is to get yourself some paper models and start whooshing them around. Um, hold it, uh, get some photographs. Look at those photographs. See if you can hold the paper model. Can you make the, the paper model do what the, the photograph is? Sometimes you can't because the bird maybe has its wings tucked a little bit more. Um, but on, on a lot of them, you can, and you can figure out what's going on with the geometry. If your brain understands why am I seeing this, it's much more likely that you'll be able to draw that. And also what then starts to happen is that when you are out there in the field and the bird comes a whooshing by, you're like, oh, I've seen that posture. I understand that posture. You'll see these postures and you can more, you'll be more successful to get it down on your paper. One last trick for things that are moving around. So this is great because you can hold it still. Photographs do the same thing. What do you do when you're out there in the field? Um, this is a trick that was taught to me by bird artist Keith Hansen. He lives in Bolinas, California. He's an absolute master bird artist and the sweetest, kindest person that you would ever want to meet. Absolute joy of, of, of life. So what Keith does is the bird is flying by and he looks up and closes his eyes for a moment and essentially turning the slate blank and then opens his eyes for just a second, looks at the, sh the shape just in that minute and closes his eyes again. Now, because he had gone from kind of a, a, a blank slate and just like opening the shutter of a camera, he is gonna capture this one little moment and then it, 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 it starts to fade. So let's just, just you know, try this, like close your eyes for just a second, keep them closed, keep them closed. And then um, I am going to, um, and keep them closed, keep them closed. Okay, when I say go, now go, open. Stare, see that shape, see that shape, see that shape. Now close your eyes. You see how that shape is just there in your memory for a moment, right? And then what you'd want to do is then try to take that shape and put it down on a piece of paper. And, but if I'm doing like, look at this pose, <laughs> that's not going to work. But as I'm moving this around, if you kind of open your eyes when you decide, you're going to see that there is. There's a, there's a little, there'll be a, there will be a little moment that you can capture. And so you can, you're essentially using your brain like a little camera. And you're going to like, of all this motion blur, uh, I don't know, I'm overwhelmed. I'm going to capture this one little moment, close my eyes again. And if I've got something there, I'm gonna quickly make just some fast gesture sketch of that down on my paper before it fades. And then using my understanding of bird anatomy, I can continue to fill that in. Another thing that I can do is sometimes birds will come back to the same pose again and again and again. If a frigate bird is following your boat, right? It's gonna be like, you know, this is gonna be a 15 minute pose. And you can come back to those same poses again and again and again and again. Drawn seabirds. So for this, um, there's some new challenges that have come into it. So you just got to keep your sense of humorous. Now, um, would love to um, uh, feedback from you folks, thoughts, questions, or ideas about drawing seabirds. So if you've got some seabird uh, drawing questions or comments, um, all you have to do is raise your hand, and I'm going to start with um, Kate. Um, Kate, it is great to see you again. You can now unmute. Hey, so I want to ask if this applies for like shoreward type things, um, or where that sort of line draws for where they're going to have like the three segment wings. Yeah. Um, so shorebirds you're going to, so um, think of this as sort of like long winged seabirds, really, really long wings. So not, you're not so much seeing this on our shorebirdy friends. Um, 
but um, the, 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 the sheer waters, the pelicans have it, um, frigate birds, the boobies, the albatrosses, um, ones that are gonna spend long, well, not, I'm not dissing any migration that a shorebird has made, they're cool. Um, but also the smaller the bird, the less it tends to soar. Right. But you'd see this on like turn, but you wouldn't see it on something like an auklet, maybe? Um, yes, I think that's right. I, yeah. I, I believe so. Okay, good to know. So trying to figure out like where that line draws, because you mentioned like a lot of yeah. species that are very different. I was kind of trying to figure out like where do you draw that line, especially since a lot of those- I love the way you think. You're, th you're, you're, you're saying like, all right, let's talk taxonomy and what, what is that group? I don't have a good list for you. I know the extremes and it's popped out there in those extremes for me. And um, you know, like gulls have humeral feathers. You can find humeral feathers on gulls, um, but it, they are less extreme than you're going to get on when you get that bird even longer wings. Right, cool. So it, it's, 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 it's a fun thing to look look at and I love that you are um, that you're also sort of thinking taxonomically sort of where does this this break down I, I would like to I would like to also do a deep dive if anybody does um, figure that out shoot me an email yeah it's kind of nice to like have a group where you can kind of understand like the basic anatomy for it and then just kind of file a way of like oh these things all run on like the same hardware basically as far as like wings and then you kind of like um with a lot of the shorebirds then you well you tend to have um like that really steep head with any and just kind of like remember to tack that onto any species because it's gonna be part of the like obvious anatomy yeah 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 i unfortunately i don't have a good answer um but i think that thinking that way will help you kind of categorize these things in your head and help you keep it in your head um if you in um if you end up doing a, 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 a deep dive uh, geek out on it, I'd love to hear the results of what you discovered. Yeah, I was thinking about doing like a research and like learn how to um, draw and paint these as like a first YouTube video. So I'm trying to like figure out how to do that. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. That would be great. That would be really, that would be very useful. Yeah, so um, I'm trying to pair some like research stuff with, um, with like the actual drawing and see where that goes. I'm guessing first year will be kind of messy, but I'm getting all the software and equipment in place and- Fantastic. In a couple of weeks, and, I'll and, be up and running. And yeah, just um, don't worry about, you know, super polish. Just start, yeah. start being a maker and refining it will come right. and um, put yourself out there. And, um, you know, the, the, if your content is good, the audience will follow. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I've been doing the short videos on Instagram and I figure like, okay, it's time for the big step and start expanding it a little bit. So yeah, thank you. I love that. I'm, I'm very excited that you're gonna be doing that. Thank yeah. you. That's All gonna right. be a really, a real asset to the community. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. All right, I see that Patty um, also you got your hand up. Um, Let's see, you can now unmute and I'll let me bring you in. Hey there. Hi, I'm not used to talking, so bear with me. Um, no worries, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. Um, last year I was watching Melinda Nakagawa. Uh, she had a workshop on albatrosses on Guam. And so I just started, I, I like albatrosses and I started searching around and found uh, the webcam for the Northern Royal Albatross in New Zealand. Oh, I don't know this. Yeah, let me give you the, um, let's see if I can put it in here. Mm, I don't know how to do it. But what I've been doing, uh, it's, it's, um, it's the uh, New Zealand Department of Conservation and Cornell University as a joint effort on the southern end of New Zealand is uh, a peninsula that comes out. And so they have a small breeding colony of albatrosses that the 
New Zealand Conservation Group and the rangers take care of during their breeding period. So I got interested in them and I've been drawing them or sketching them on this roll. And I don't know if I can, as, as the chick develops, a chick last year that was born in January or hatched and fledged in into September. And so what I did was take screenshots as the uh, albatross developed and sketched it. Do you want to see? I, I do. Let me, I'm going to remove my spotlight so that your screen gets bigger. I am, you, you've got my full attention. Okay, I, I don't know if I can do this, but it's real thin paper. Um, uh, up a little bit, there we go. Uh, let me see. So what maybe is it, is it possible to bring the computer's camera down? Uh -oh. oh, look at this. Sam, oh. could you help me? I'm going to get my husband to help. Oh, excellent. Excellent. It's a team effort. <laughs> yeah. This is cool having this, this, uh, this scroll. And then, yeah. and then okay. the growth of this thing will all be on this one. Scroll. That's... Oh, yes. Now, now we've got a good view of it. Now, this is Kiaki. And this is when she was, I have the date on here, but I think it's about middle of the summer. And the thick part of the roll here goes way back to March when she was just a fluffy ball. Oh my goodness. This is what a brilliant project. Thank you. Um, oh, I, I've got an idea. idea. What if, um, let, let's just try it without the piece of paper behind it. One of you holding the one side of the scroll, one of you the other, and then we can, and then you can just, you can just pan across yeah. as one of you rolls the scroll and the other one unrolls. Okay. But we don't want you to wrinkle that paper if this is. There's a glare behind us. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Okay, this goes your way. I don't think this is working very well. Okay, I'll scroll. Oh, I've got all Here's these. a picture of um, Chiaki learning to fly. Oh, a, uh, several different oh, oh, was, uh, catching so the wind. cool. Yes. <laughs> Can you oh, see that? Spin? Yes. Yeah. Catching yep. the wind again. Testing those wings. Oh, I think I lost. Or if there's a window shade in the window, block that light that comes through. Oh, Isn't this a cool idea? A Wait, way can, of. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. We hear oh, you okay. very well. I, I thought I got fumbled up here. So, but I'll I'll just stop here. I just wanted to share it and. Um, Others may want to get oh, oh, could, could you scroll it just a little bit more? I, I would love to see some of this. Okay. Maybe I'll go the other direction that way. Or are, are we going now getting younger? Yes. Oh so boy. So I we're gonna to... we're gonna get to see the little the little well, chick. I don't think we'll get that far, but I'll get you a couple. It's neat as or are these of oh, the wing feathers are maybe starting to grow in here? Yeah. Stretching yeah. the wing. And oh, oh, this is such a brilliant project. I love this project. And I had to put some color in. These are the rangers um, weighing her or actually putting the um, tracker on her back. So she's been tracked across the ocean when after fledgling, after fledgling, she, um, we were able to track her. Yeah, no, by, by the way, I'm tracking the, the feedback in the chat. People are saying like more and more, we want to see more of this. This is so much fun. And then you're zooming in. 
uh, what uh, just having this in this scroll is just such an invitation to come back to it again and to keep building it and keep building it and keep building it. Here's the parent feeding her. Oh, just the heads, and you can see she's uh, the feathers are. Well, I'll I'll keep scrolling. Here she is, um, a little younger. And how long have you been doing this project? Well, all winter. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is this. There's so much just love and beauty and wisdom in this. This, this, oh. is, um, this is the parent. Oh. Oh. So I just want, I didn't mean to take up a lot of time, but I no, 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 this is, this, this is not taking up time. This is really rich. This is well, really you. rich. Thank you, Patty. This, this is incredibly inspiring. And thank you. what a, um, what a tribute to those birds. What's the status of the conservation of those albatross? Uh, they're they're increasing in numbers, and right now, um, if anybody wants to get onto the webcam, there's um, a new young one, a new fledgling, who uh, she, she he I, we don't know the sex yet, but it was it hatched in January, into January, oh. and the parents have just left it alone for a few nights, and it's it's just a big fluff ball now, and it's it's royal royal albatross. Wet, uh, live cam. I should find it. If, if anybody can find the, the link, please put that in the chat. Um, we'll also try to link to that in the show notes um, for the, 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 the talk. And what, so it's brilliant that they have this webcam on, the, on it, but then it just takes it to the next level that you've been documenting this and then put it on this continuous scroll. Um, I would suggest that you reach out to them and tell them about your project. I, 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 I would, what an absolute treasure. I was thinking of um, sending them the whole scroll. What do you think? Um, I, I, I would first let them know that it's coming and, okay. and to sort of, to sort of engage with a, a conversation with them about it. Because what you want is for it to land in the hands of the right person. Because like it lands in the wrong, hands of the wrong person, they're like, oh, this is cool. Oh, that's really neat. That's really sweet. What do I do with it? Maybe I'll put it on my desk. And somebody else is going to be like, oh, we need to exhibit, the, exhibit this in the community center as an inspiration to, um, to, 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 to other people about you know, stewardship of like, like if it lands in the right hands, that like cool things could happen. Well, thank you. And I'm, I'm getting, I'm writing in the, um, that it's, that's fine. I'll just write this in after I get off. Okay. The, great. the website. All right. And right hey. now, right now on the webcam, there's a parent feeding the young. So, oh, oh, oh. government. This <laughs> but that's really great. I almost have it for you. Oh, Patty, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Oh, wow. That was crazy. That was not crazy. That was brilliant. That was inspiring. That was wise. No craziness about that. That was like deep wisdom, love. Mm, that makes me happy. Um, hey, Walters, love to hear your thoughts on that and see what you've been up to. You are the inspiration that we had this, uh, this uh, seabird workshop. Um, you can unmute now, I think. Yes. Ah. No. Yeah, I, I love the drawings and the idea is absolutely amazing. The idea is absolutely amazing because I sometimes myself uh, watch some live cameras and um, the Latvian Fund of Nature has set up a multiple on hawks and eagles so every year there are like six live webcams and people have gotten to like them you know they feel uh, feel uh, 
together with the birds and uh, watch them. And that's a very good idea. I think I might do it this year uh, on watching the uh, watching the sea eagles. So would be a very nice idea. But I had the question about the seabirds in flight and all birds in flight. I couldn't quite figure out how to show um, this edge that is on the far side because uh, if I put it in too bold um, you cannot really see it yeah. in the photos yeah. at least but if there is no edge then the wing looks like it's attached here it's funky yeah. it's very upside so how to well, show this well I, I think the way that, edge. that that you um, that you've handled it is is a really a uh, good way to do that. So what you've done is you've got a little lost and found edge going on there, a hint of that line. Um, mm -hmm. And, but you make that too strong, it'll feel like you're dropping over a really crisp, clear edge. And so mm -hmm. a, a little bit of a suggestion of an inflection point there, um, just as you've done. And mm -hmm. um, I think that's great. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, it's it's fun to see those um, those uh, those those sketches there. Um, I, yeah, I with know. the blue with the blue pencil, it really helps. Yeah. Uh, it really helps. I I was uh, at first I was just putting in the lines, and then the lines for the wings and constructing them already. But if I do like quick gesture sketches. Just put the wings in quickly. How do they look like? It really helps that nice. way. So, oh, it's impossible to see, but um, yeah. Well, well that, that's, that's, Perfect. that's, that's, uh, there's the rub of the non photo blue pencil. It doesn't show up on our videos very well, but you've got enough information yeah. in front of you to be able to really work with that. Um, yeah. Where some of these, uh, I, I, you know, you, you had asked such a rich question about sort of the, the what's going on with these wings of the seabirds in flight. Um, I, I hope that this was, um, was uh, is, is gonna be useful for you um, as you're now, that now as you're out there windsurfing, you're gonna be distracted by like, like, oh, what's going on with that wing over there? Yep, we, uh, shearwaters are returning. Oh, they, nice. um, return in February. So um, I sometimes see, and also flying fish. So you can do this as well with flying fish. Wow. Yeah. That's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And you know, one more thing I wanted to share this book. It's, uh, well, it's an identification guide, but it's very useful. It's um, Seabirds of the World. Uh, I think it's, yes, all of the seabirds. And it's published by Lynx. Uh, it's a very beautiful publisher. And well, there's just tons of seabirds and tons of seabirds in flight on this oh, one. Wow. Uh, it's called, for a better, it's called Seabirds, the new identification guide by Peter Harrison, Martin Perrow and Hans Larsen. Um, they so, did it. That, um, that looks really solid. Can you uh, just jump to the um, maybe the albatross section? I'm just going to jump the albatross. Yeah, there's everything. There's penguins, tropic birds, every possible seabird you can imagine. Mm, da -da -da. I'm going to find. Oh, this one's good. All right. Let Let me. Um, I'm going to get rid of my screen so that you're big. There we go. Look. Look at this one, it's crazy how, how foreshortened it is, the primaries. Yeah. Yep, yep. And if we hadn't done this, you'd look at some of this and you'd go like, hey, you drew it wrong. Why are you got the head all tilted mm -hmm. over to the side? Um, yeah. And now there's, there's uh, one of these albatross, um, the humerals I think are jet black on a white wing oh, when you look at the back. Um, and so take a quick look on a different, uh, see if you can spot that one. Um, um, they're black. Yeah, I think there's one that has black humerals. 
the, uh, just these monotonal quickly they're not for certain than anyone but cool uh explaining uh anatomy and how to identify that's them nice that's nice um so on the underside they're black or on i think on the top the, on the back on the top of the wings uh, da, 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 da. maybe somewhere there's quite a lot of albatrosses you wouldn't think mm. I don't know. I, I'm no, I already name. skipped oh. past, and there's yeah, no patrols worries. here. No, no worries. No, but that, that looks like a, a, a really useful book. Um, it is. And uh, and Hans uh, Hans Larsen, he also I think illustrated the book you showed on birds on Europe. Such uh, a beautiful he, book. Yeah, I, I got the uh, just so I can see the pictures better because it's for me it's not a field guide because I'm, yeah. I, but I got the large version of it just so I could see those beautiful illustrations a little bit better. Um, oh, I found some boobies. Oh, 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 nice, nice, nice. Oh, that's so useful. That's so useful. These ones and these ones, these ones, this one's with the four, Frightened, um, yes. right there wing. Yep, that, that far wing. You just how tempting it would be to draw that the same shape as the ones that are close to you. And you can also see that uh, the shape of the outer primary, that angle where the wrist is on it. Um, oh, that's, that's fun. I got it. I, I, I'm going to see if I can track down this book. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. And uh, but just quick, uh, try to look also at some other books by links because they publish and almost all are with drawings. I have a lot of uh, uh, books from links uh, publishing. So very good. Oh, excellent. Recommend. I will. I will look for that. <clears throat> um, thank you. Thank you. Um, that's that's really really cool. Um, now, let me. Hold up my screen has. On can you still hear me? Oh yep okay now I'm back. Um, thank you so much, Walters. That was really cool. Happy shorebirding. I mean that I mean uh, seabirding. Um, I see Ray Bonto's got something to share, and uh, also Kate has got another thing that she wanted to um, share with us. Um, Ray Bonto, great to see you. And what's going on in your journal? Uh, you are currently muted. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, look at these wings. You can just see the planes and the structure of these wings. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, so um, I decided to use the zebra pen that you gave me at the end. Mm -hmm. And it really pops um, them in, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you and and also uh, I see one of the frigate birds up there in the corner. Um, yes, notice how uh, so really simple. Ray Bonto has just punched in a, a drawing with essentially two values. There's black, and then he's got a midtone of gray. But he's deliberately um, maybe hold it a little bit closer to the screen. Um, that one up there in the corner um, by your left hand. Um, the, uh, you can see that the, the top surface of the wing done with a lighter, um, lighter pen work. And then that drops that rest of that wing into dark shadow, just as so much volume, you can, you really get a, a sense, a sense of that three-dimensional structure of that bird really, really quickly. That's cool. That's really cool. 
Thank you. And I was, I didn't get to do really a lot. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. How interesting. So more plumage variations in these pigeons. Yeah. Um, this is the regular one. Mm -hmm. I mean, classic. Uh, and this is a breed. Yeah, that's an interesting one with that. The, the white on the secondaries. Um, and and uh, stranger. It's got a stripe of black. One stripe of black. Interesting. It'd be interesting to uh, spread that wing out and see um, if that stripe of black, is there just one black feather that is mixed in there with all the rest? Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. And crocus. Oh. You've got color again. <laughs> That's great. So are you mixing watercolor with gouache? Yes. That's terrific. They really play so well together. Um, wow, that, your, your, your color studies on toned paper, it just, it's got so much richness to it. That's really exciting to see. I like the the way that those um, having some of those 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 dark undersides of those petals there also really helps bring volume and shape to this. If you just take your finger and you cover up some of those dark accents on that bottom part of the of the crocus. Um, it, it the, the picture kind of flattens out, but because you've also punching that in, that extra little bit of value in there really does a lot to describe the form. Love it. Now, this is just quick um, gestures and some sets. Um, let's see, I can't quite see it. Cool. Tell me about what you're studying here. Um, well, I didn't really. I just sketched and did some sets. So the sets is set crocus, which is. Well, I just I don't know what I was thinking, mm -hmm. but I called it ripe crocus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tell me about the set that you are observing and so th this is for folks who are just uh, kind of you know, this. Uh, uh, Ray Bonta is also sort of thinking mathematically about kind of grouping things and sets of things and subsets of those. Tell me this about sort of how you were applying the idea of sets to that set of observations. So there were some um, OK crocuses. Um, it should have been OC, but RC, just happened to be but anyways um and some trampled crocuses and some uh oh okay <laughs> oh i i must have gotten it mixed up <laughs> oh that's fun uh, well but Set crocus is one is rotten crocuses and the other is just crocus. And crocus is the subset, which is trampled crocus and just crocus. And that's how much I got to. I, I like it. And just sort of yeah, thinking, um, you're also as you're observing things, you're also just sort of thinking about um you're, you're applying the idea of mathematical notation to other things that you're seeing. And that's going to also help you just be able to visualize math in your head um, or maths as you say over there. That's fun. Ray Bonto, thanks so much for sharing that. Thank you. 
Um, let's jump over to Kate and then see what Jack's got for us. Hi there. Oh, wait, hold on. I have to allow you to unmute. Now you can unmute. Uh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Last time we spoke, when I was showing stuff, you um, were on your phone. So I was showing yeah. you last time, I started ah. doing some, there was a little oh. class on that um, Polish Art Institute thing that I've been taking classes from, and it was on uh, botanical illustration watercolors. Yes. Some really interesting stuff. They're talking about finding a style with either using like graphite underneath to create the shading or trying to do it with watercolors. Um, and then they had an assignment where you had to take part of flower and dissect it. Oh, that is such a good exercise. And look at, oh, look at the little bit of gloss on the tulip petal. Oh, yes. oh, hey, that, wait, wait, I get that. I did a tulip and I did a lily. The lily, I kind of got lost in some of it, but um, it was a really good exercise on working on like finding the planes or like you do with the bird wings and the foreshortening. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, wow. But oh, um, get the tulip one a little bit closer to us. I want to sort of look into this. So everybody notice how much, how important some of those dark values are that give you real structure down, sort of allow you to sort of see into those leaves. And also a, a little bit of, um, it, it takes a, a, a lot of sort of deliberate planning to be able to get reflections on, you sort of feel that those, um, the, the, the petals up there have a gloss to them. Yeah, so how I do that is I'll do an undertone layer and then I'll let that dry completely. And I'll put another layer on top of it and I'll lift some of that color off to let the other one shine through in with more intensity in some places. And that really helps create like highlights and, um, you can see it better in another illustration I did that I'm going to save for last. Um, but this was the final for that class. And I decided to do a, I think it's Amita uh, mascara. And for that one, ah. was, I really brought that into use where I did a yellow undertone, did some um, orange on top of it. And then I did a really, I let the, those two dry really well. And then when I did my bright red, I just lifted it off in those areas. And on the taping, what I did was I made sure that I drew like the little cone to show the light direction. So I just had that reference right there. Yeah. And I also used masking fluid, which um, allowed me to just really make those washes and not have to worry about making or being really careful not to hit the little white dots. Um, yeah, yeah it, it really makes that with that, that slight um, creamy tone in the background makes the white stalks and the white spots really pop. Yeah, and that's one of the things like they're unnaturally white in nature. I think that's one of the things that really is kind of characteristic. I knew that if I lost that whiteness, then um, it just wouldn't look quite right, even if yeah. I tried to layer on a white gouache. Um, so I just wanted to be really clean and I did the cream background so that I could really show the texture and show mm. um, the like highlighted areas. Oh, that's really, that is so rich. Um, yeah, and you get the sense of those, those smooth blending areas across the tops of the caps. Yeah. And then there's those bright white, there's no way you'd be able to work around all those little white spaces. I also did gills too, which I think was really important because I created a white line and I basically drew it in with the um, the masking fluid so that I could paint over it. And then when I revealed it, there would be um, that stark white compared to like yep. that shaded color. And then right underneath it, while the masking fluid was still on, on the underside of the bright white part, I do like a bluish shadow. So you'd have the most intensity of shadow like right next to where it's brightest. Um, yeah. 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 That yeah, it really makes those pop. Yeah. And if anyone follows my Instagram, there's a video on there that's like a speed paint. It's about a minute long that shows the whole process of sketching it using a um, really? uh, the transfer 
you know, like the see-through paper, the tracing paper, I trace stuff off of my sketches and then I put it on here so I wouldn't have to worry about like tearing up my nice paper with eraser marks. Um, and it's like shows that whole process. Now, um, what, um, I, I don't really make much use of Instagram. And so um, tell me uh, if I want to find you and follow you there, I'm kind of a noob at it. What, is there a handle or how do I find you and then connect with that? Cause I'd love yeah. to see that. So if you went to the search bar and put in K Chandler illustration, um, it should pop up, it's public. K Chandler illustrations. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. I am there now. Oh, awesome. hey. oh, 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 you've just, uh, this is, this is going to be the rest of my afternoon. There's so much material here. So thank you for posting all this. Oh, thank you. Um, I really am looking forward to, um, to, to checking that out. And then, and now I'm watching you do this. Okay. I, I'm going to, is it okay if I do a, a screen share? Please do. Yeah. yeah go okay. For it. So, so everybody check, check this out. This is just, way too much fun for um i so i, I can't i can't bogart um uh this this uh i, I gotta i gotta share this there, there we go. here we go um and i'm gonna go to zoom i'm gonna go to share screen um uh here we are and can you see that yes we can Oh, oh, that's so there's a masking so fluid going on. So putting all that masking fluid in. Um, and then you have to really carefully clean that out of your brush. And now I you're starting cheap brushes that I or like really old ones. And then I make sure to go over it with the oh look, look, look at oh look at the look at so starting with the yellow and then yeah. building that up. And then you're lifting out, I see, and then that yellow glows through. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a really simple technique. The main thing is just making sure that it's really dry, and that's where the hair dryer has become indispensable. I should dry <laughs> my hair more often, but um, <laughs> um are you um, are you finding that um, the the hair dryer changes the uh, makes the, the the stuff stick to the paper in a weird way or does it seem to work fine with that the masking fluid yeah no um i've tried a couple different brands um i tried like the windsor newton one a long time ago and it kept ripping out my paper so i kind of stopped using it for a long time but lately i've been using um dr ph martin's and i have had no problems with this so far it's like way better than anything else i've used i think it costs really? like eleven dollars so it's a little pricey but it lasts forever um actually i've been told right. that you need to go through these kind of fast so that they don't lose their consistency but we'll see if it starts not working then i guess we'll figure out the shelf life yeah okay. there's a few more of these little videos um i mean i think this one's the best one but yeah they're all really short Oh, this is this is cool. I I I think I, I would love to see you start sort of sharing this in your process. Yeah, um, and this is just done with an iPhone on a ten dollar mount. Um, so it's pretty easy to do just something like this. Wow. Um, filming wise. Oh, okay. This is exciting. Yeah. This is really exciting. There's a few more. All the videos on there are just of painting. Um. Like this one shows the transfer process for the lilies. Oh, how interesting. So basically I do that on like cheap sketchbook paper so I can get the general shapes and make all these messy lines. Yeah. I don't have to worry about yeah. reappearing. And then there's the tracing paper and the transfer paper. Yep. Yeah. So that little gray sheet has carbon on one side. So it transfers the light dose drawing. So if she had drawn that on her piece of paper, on, on her good watercolor paper, and then had to erase things and kind of re-erase it and move that line over there, then she'd have all these grooves in her paper and the eraser would chew up 
the surface of the paper and there'd be pencil smudges. So this allows her to draw something then transfer it to a piece of paper. Do that really and if you're drawing, you can get the grease from your hands on um, yeah. the paper and that the tracing paper really protects it, which is really nice because they don't have like the random spots. And the same thing is done with the hyacinth here. Oh, this is, seeing your process is really useful. Just you're, you're layering these watercolors in layer after layer after layer after layer, building that up, taking your time, punching in your values now. Yeah, and that one just had some white gouache to finish off with. I'm trying to think, there should be a few more on there too. Oh, okay. But this it's so is... fun to kind of watch it come back together too. And it's like, yeah, oh, that's my mother. <laughs> That's, that's great. Yeah. Ah, oh, oh, so exciting. This is really exciting. Um, so great, uh, great resource. So um, we're at Kay Chandler Illustrations and uh, we can find you on Instagram right there. Yeah. Really nice, really nice. Ah. I do mostly art, but you follow me on there, you're going to find some pictures of my cat. That's okay, all. that was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, thank you. Um, so the um, let's uh, also check in with Jack um, and see what is happening in your sketchbook, in your world. How are you doing? Hi. Good. So two days ago it was really fun we went to a cool um wolf sanctuary place and that was so cool like um we got to walk we listened to them howl and it was just so cool they got a ton of they they most of the wolf they have they rescued um and i did some sketches off the pictures we took Oh, look at this. This one's a little blocky in his face, but. Oh, let, let me, I'm gonna uh, minimize my screen just so we can make that bigger. Um, oh, look at that. That's, that's so cool that, that you really kind of got that, that wolf just flopped over on its side. And there's, what an interesting angle looking up at the underside of the, the head I also like the way you brought in that um, that frame, a little note about the eye color. Oh, you, because and, you did those um, notes, because you took this these these journal pages, you're gonna your memory of that is going to be just so much better. You got to hear them howl. Yeah, and um, they all had names. So I I forget. I think the one I drew was Spirit. I think, but. I'll tell you all their names. Um, these are just the ones we saw. There was even more. One of them was Little Joe, Little Girl, Spirit and Micah, Loki. Um, he was Loki, what they said was mischievous. Like they found in his den, like a secret stash of like stuff he had stolen, like gloves and the antenna to uh, um, radio. So he was super mischievous. Um, his name was Loki, Luna, Gideon, Akira, Lincoln, Sunrise, Yellow Feather, Jasper, Cuzco, Hera, and Sky were the ones we saw. Oh, oh that's so much fun. And oh, yes. oh yeah, we um went to this um creek nearby, like two minutes from home. It's um Deer Creek, and I gathered a little water sample um in my um little thing here. And it was really interesting looking at the water under my microscope, like super zoomed up. And we, I found some like um, organisms. I'm wondering, I don't think they're organisms. I think they're some sort of bacteria, but I know um, there's a cell wall and then you can see the um, cell membrane inside. And then, so it was really interesting. I know it, this, I can't stop not seeing this going like a little, a guy make going like Yep, yep, <laughs> the little googly eyes. Yeah, once you see it, you can't unsee the googly eyes, right? Yeah, but um, this is like, there were these like rings and all of them had this little green dot somewhere inside the ring. So that was really interesting. Oh, interesting. 
Interesting. Oh, that's so cool. And then that that's that little green dot um ten times its size under mm -hmm. my microscope. Oh, interesting. This is fun. This is really fun. Um, and, and any more? Oh yeah. I this is from a little while ago, but um. Oh yeah. Um, this little little seed pod here. Um, yes. Um, there was like a seed inside. You could see the shadow of it, and that was pretty cool. And I couldn't get it open. I was after I sketched it, like the whole pot. I was trying to get the seed open, and I couldn't get it. Like I, I took the rest of the, of it away, but I just couldn't get it open. So I made the title "Seed Safe." Oh, love it! I love and it. And then, the, and then I had to um, take my little tool to um, slice it open so I could see the end, just at least half of it with my little um, slicing tool. Um, yeah. And if you look closely, this should have been more orange. So I said, should have been more orange next time, Walters. You know, when. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's our next time. That's right. Exactly. And I think that was it. I love the Walters quote in your journal. <laughs> and then today. This class is really fun. I really like those short seabirds. Oh, oh, yep. You're really getting these planes really blocking in these shapes. This little, this little guy was already there. Yep. That's what he's there. Oh, that's, that's terrific, Jack. And that's it. Well, thank you so much for, 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 for sharing that. I loved um, uh, getting a chance to, to, to look into the wolf sanctuary there with you and see those sketches, your deep dive into the pond and investigation. That's, I mean, the, the micro world is so much fun. Actually, my, my, uh, my, my, my favorite critter, my Patronus is a water bear. So that's a little microscopic. Uh, I've seen those before. They're you've seen water bears? bears? Well, not, not actually in real life, but I've seen pictures of them. They look really funny. Yeah, they're, they're just crazy, crazy little things. And they're they're just they're out in those ponds just kind of doing their water bear things. And um I know that like they can withstand um like extreme climates. Like they can withstand like the hottest and coldest temperatures on earth, and they can they can survive in space. That's right. They can survive the vacuum of space because they're water bears. The uh, and if if um if there's, this is kind of a, 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 a rabbit hole that you can go down on. There's, um, there's, there's a person out there who is taking old Soviet propaganda posters, and and then with uh, and and then putting um, water bears into them, and <laughs> that's <laughs> that's pretty fun. Um, so the. Uh, uh, that's that's a great thing to 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 to, to look for. The uh, if you're if you're a water bear enthusiast, um, look for water bear or tardigrade propaganda posters. Um, Jack, thank you so much for sharing that. That was really fun. Thank you. Great to see you. Um, let's uh, bounce over to Argentina. Argentina, uh, Kyle, it's great to see you. Um, and uh, how are you doing today? Oops, I have to allow you to unmute. My bad. You are good now. Uh, we, we, we... My fault. I was trying to help and I messed up. Oh, oh okay. Oh, wait, hold on. We're going to try one more time. And now uh, try, try to unmute one more time. Now. Hello. Oh, yeah. hello. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you again. What is happening in your journal? Well, uh, the other day we went to a river. There were lots of mountains, and uh, there was the Andean condor. Uh, there's a few here where I live because we have a lot of mountains. So 
I brought a packet. Wait a minute. So we, so folks, we're about to get an Andean condor sketch live from the field. This is cool. This is bad. cool. I was in the, in the, I was eating when I did this. <laughs> so. <laughs> a few mustard stains. That's okay. That's okay. And oh, I'm sorry. I did some moon observations. Uh, say again. I did some moon observations. Oh, you did, you did. Okay, now, now, all right. Now I'm gonna remove my spotlight. And can, can you share those with us? Um, the, it was cloudy, all cloudy. Um, so it was hard to see the moon, but well, uh, I, couldn't see there was a dark spot, so I only did what I saw. Because, okay. Um, uh, I think now I have. Ah, ah. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. And what time was it? What time was it that you observed this? It was at uh, nine and five p.m. So, so at, at, at that was about not, around 9 p.m. But hold on, let me grab mine, because what we're going to do is a Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere moon comparison. All right, and what date was that? What day was that? It was the 6th. The on the 6th. Okay, hold on a second. Um, March 6th. And... Um, around nine, right? Yeah. Uh, March 6th at nine. Now, um, this is going to be cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to do split screen. So I'm going to be on one side, um, adding in spotlight. And um, I am going to put my moon observations Oh, this is this is this is this is good. This is good. Um, um, here we are. Hmm. That didn't do what I thought it would. Oh, I just changed my microphone, not my. Well, let me try this again. Uh, this microphone, and here is. Um, so I'm going to come down and at nine, um, on the sixth, on March 6th, mine was a little crescent and, and it was at the bottom and it was higher on the, um, on my right side than my left. Look, compare that with what we're seeing in the Southern Hemisphere. And that was, that was 9 p.m., am I right? Yes, it was. So, 9 and 5 p.m. So I'm going to add a little note in here. Um, I'm going to draw a little arrow. And you have um, and yours is coming in here. So where you're seeing that glowy part is flipped from what I'm seeing. Yes. That is really interesting. Um, so this is view in Oh, that is really, really fun.
Um, so what we're able to do here with our journals is we're able to, at the same, uh, at the same time, be able to compare these um, uh, 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 across attitudes. That's, that's interesting. I had expected, um, I had expected yours to be um, the, um, so this is, it looks like a um, kind of a mirror image sort of horizontal flip and not a vertical flip. I, that's gonna be fun for me to kind of think about why uh, it flips that way. Um, that's really, really neat to see. So thank you so much for doing moon observations. We had a moon party, but we had no input from the uh, Southern hemisphere. We didn't see, have any notes that people took um, in the Southern hemisphere. So that's really cool. Um, and thank you so much. And now the condor, did you get a sketch of that? Yes, I did. It isn't the best. Uh, that, oh, that's okay. Whatever we get. I mean, the condor is moving around. You know, you're just doing the best you can with, with, with what you got. It's not about making a, a pretty picture of something. It's about paying attention. And um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to remove my spotlight. Oh, wow. Look at this. And oh, also, oh uh, I like how you've sort of trimmed off the primary tips on one side. If that side is turned away from you, um, those would be then foreshortened out of your view. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, really broad mm -hmm. soaring wings. They are enormous. They, they fly. They go round and round, and uh, they they are fantastic. Uh, I watched them with the telescope, and the, you, I could see them when they were in in a rock. Oh, and, they per they went and perched on a rock. Oh man, yeah. that's that's really cool. I don't know really much cool. in English, so I can describe. And also, I tried to. That's that's cool. That is really cool. And so you and you had a little telescope, so you could really watch them and get a good look. I borrowed it. Yeah, I was um, just a little bit south of here. Um, I'm actually going back to this spot this weekend with my 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 uh, with my family. There's a place called Pinnacles National Monument, and um it has really cool rock formations and it also has uh california condors so when i was there these were um california condors that were um that's a turkey vulture up here but this is california condor with the big white spots here the red spots are tags that scientists have put on them so that each one has its own kind of tag and number and then they'll they'll land on the tops of these things. So you have to hike all the way up to the top of the pinnacles there. And then you can look around and, and see these guys in the evenings, in the late afternoon and evening, they come down. This one was perched on a tree that was right over the trail. And so I walked right underneath these two that were perched on this, this, this log and looked up and they were just kind of looking around and being condors and having a good old time. Um, really fun, fun birds. So. They are very fun, the condor. Oh, but the Andean condor, that's got all those crazy, crazy colors on it. Um, what, what a treat to be able to see that. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, thank, thank you. Absolutely. I'm happy. I'm really Really good to see you. Thanks. That was some good journaling there. Xenia, uh, what's happening in your journal? 
Oh, I have to allow you to unmute. Now, now you can unmute. There we go. Uh, hi, Jack. Uh, it's been so long since I've shared my journal pages. So I wanted to kind of just share what I've been doing. Um, I've been working on sketching uh, birds because uh, I've been, I actually just got a suet bird feeder in my backyard. And it's really fun because we have so many juncos and cardinals that are hanging out in our backyard. And for the past few months, I've been working on sketching them. And like, this is my very first sketch from months ago from, I think it was from actually one of uh, like Ask Jack, maybe about like, you know, a month ago or something, but it's like, here's some like little- Oh, yeah. oh look at these. Yep, really solid. And then as I was progressing, uh, here are actually, here's some cardinals that I was drawing. <sighs> Oh, fun. Now, are you using a water soluble um, pencil there for those tones? Um, no, I'm just using here. I have this set of just like different pencils. Oh, okay. And, Great. Uh, yeah. Um, and here's from another Ask Jack. I remember it was a red tailed hawk. I had a lot of fun doing this one. Oh, that is so solid. I love the angles on the head. Yeah, uh, thanks. Th that, I really like it. And, it looks and really that beak prominent. sort of set in that, that that head sort of turned at it. So the head is at a three quarter angle, looking in a different way than the body that's also at a three quarter angle. So yeah. um, it's so dynamic. Really, really love that. Thank you. And then recently, I've been. Let me see if I can find some recent sketches. Um. Oh, actually, here's um, a bird nest that I was working on. I was practicing what you said about using the white crayon and then um, putting watercolor over yes. it. Yes. Um, so here's like one that I was practicing. Oh, fun. Wait, 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 wait. A little bit. Spend us, give us a little bit more of a look. Oh, yeah. You really got to get a sense of the bowl in there, too. Yeah. And then let me see if. Uh, oh, from drawing this like just a random sketch that I did. Uh, I don't usually draw mammals. I really I'm, I draw birds mostly, but I think it would be cool to get into drawing more. Well, 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 bring us back to the elk there. Was do you, oh, yeah. do, so? Do you have elk in your area? No, uh, I did this from one of your YouTube videos. <laughs> ah, okay, but nice, nice proportions. This is yeah. looking really solidly elky. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, from today. Uh, let me just find them. The albatross. Uh, oh, and look at the booby diving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then they have those funky wing angles when they kind of bend their wing and, yeah. Yeah, and then. Great. And then this one I really liked. Oh, yes, yes. That far wing really wraps over, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then not in my journal, but more like for like, I do more detailed drawings on the side from like photographs. I've been working on uh, two of them doing a puffer fish. <laughs> oh, Xenia, this is really, really, it just, it just sort of feels like it's emerging from the paper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've been improving for sure, especially with shading. Shading is yes. really hard for me sometimes. <laughs> That's then, so much fun. Yeah, and then working You've been on, putting in some crazy miles. <laughs> yeah, I've been working really hard on it lately. <laughs> That's great. That's so exciting. And then uh, working with colored pencil, I've been doing some koi fish. I'm still working on it, but it's like an above view and I'm yes. planning on adding yeah. more yeah. water ripples. Love that. Oh, that's, that. what fun. Uh, Zenia, you you have been you've been ta taking your pencil miles very seriously, and it's really paying off. That's that's great to see. And how exciting now to have a suet feeder! Yeah, it's really great. <laughs> that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Thank yeah, you so much for sharing with th that with us, and we'd love to sort of see an, any sort of new things you're doing. And we want to definitely check in on that puffer fish as it as it develops. Something that is unfortunate though. I actually love being able to see part of the puff. Could we get the puffer fish back? 
Yeah, sure. I love I love drawings where like part of them is really worked out, and then part of them you can see like the different parts of your process. Yeah. <laughs> That, that stage where you kind of can see into the drawing process of drawing is one of my, my favorite moments in it. Yeah, I want to see it all finished out, but I also just love them when they're there. You can actually see the different strategies. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like I usually work on the face and then it slowly gets less and less finished. And then I work on like the back last, but yeah. Yeah. Xenia, thank you so much. Thank you. That's really cool. That's really cool. Really exciting things happening in everybody's journals today. I really appreciate um, sharing those. Um, in just a moment, um, we're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be um, heading out, and um, it's uh, it's time for lunch here in California. I have to grab myself a little bit of lunch before I head over to Amelia's school. I'm teaching her class how to do nature journaling, and we're in the middle of this mapping project. So we're making uh, maps, and they've all learned their paces, and so we're going to be doing that, and I'd better have a full tummy um, for doing that. Um, but I, I, I'm so inspired by the stuff I'm seeing in all of these journals, um, and how beautiful that we are developing this uh, community all around the world. Um, you know, there are, uh, if you look at, at a map, there are, are, are lines on maps that put some people in one country and some people in another. The more that we kind of get to know each other, the more we realize that we're all real people deserving of dignity and respect and kindness. Um, Let's keep that in mind as we sort of think about the unfolding sort of political situations all around the globe. Um, and the more that we can feel empathy for, feel connection with, um, feel um, the relationship, the profound connection that we have with, um, with, with others. Um, Let's use that insight to put pressure on our political leaders to take care of everybody. So not just the people in my house, not just the people in my family, not just the people in my state, not just the people in my country, um, but let's look sort of globally at uh, each other as sisters and brothers and um, remember that connection. Um, Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for sharing your work. And I hope you have some fun drawing seabirds. Remember to whoosh them. And we'll see you again soon. <laughs>